Father, I thank you because your word is true. Your words are true. Your words are yea and amen. Open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you because your word cannot fail. Your word is true. Your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your word cannot fail. I can stand on your word. I can stand on your promises. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Because your word are sure, your words, your promises are sure. Oh, you are true to your word, you are faithful to your word. Say, Father, I give you praise. Father, I thank you. Oh, because your word is the anchor for my soul. On your word I stand. Your word is my hope. Your word gives me peace. Your word gives me joy. Your word is the anchor for my soul. When I remember your promises, I can be glad again. When I remember your promises, I can be strong. When I remember your promises, there's peace, there's joy, there's hope. Oh, Father, thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises. Thank you because your word never fails. Your promises never fail. Oh, I give you praise, Jesus. Can you thank him, thank him, thank him for the infallibility of his promise? For his word is infallible, his word cannot fail. His word is yea and amen, his promises are true. Oh, we are kept by his word, we are kept by the word of the Lord. Can you thank the Lord for his word, for his promises? Oh, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. Can you tell God that, Lord, I hope in your promises. I hope in your promises. I'm expecting the fulfillment of your promises. I do not just receive them as words, as mere words. I'm expecting them. I live in, in the hope of your promises. I live in the expectation of the fulfillment of your promises. I look forward to receive your counsel, the fulfillment of your words. Lord, I'm hopeful because you have spoken. You have spoken your word and I'm hopeful that your word will come to pass. I'm hopeful that I will receive your word. I'm hopeful, Lord. I'm hopeful. Oh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that I will receive your word. I know your promises will come to pass. I thank you, Father. Can you pray this morning and ask God for an encounter this morning? That Lord will cause his word to find a place in your heart. That his word will meet with faith in your heart. That there will be, and that your heart will receive the word of God this morning. That your heart will receive the word of God. That the counsel of God will come to you. That God will cause his heart to come to you. That it will be heart to heart this morning. That there will be a flow of grace. That there will be a release of the power of God into your heart, into your life, into your situation. There will be a flow of grace. There will be a release of grace. In the name of Jesus, there will be a flow of grace. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you praise for this morning. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you because your mercy never fails. Your faithfulness endures forever. Thank you for bringing us together once again this morning to fellowship with you and with one another thank you for the privilege to share this 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 life this communion this fellowship with you and with one another be glorified oh god thank you for your life that unifies us thank you for your promises that keep our heart you are grateful jesus be glorified we ask for an encounter this morning because our hearts to behold you got our across our eyes to see you let our life be transformed by power of your word. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church. Can you welcome someone to church? Welcome someone to church this morning. Welcome someone to church this morning. Welcome to church. Thank God for the privilege to be in his presence this morning. Money, you are looking very good. Looking so good. Money, money will fit you. Money will fit you. Money will fit this guy. Ah, ah. Yeah, this guy, let's do. 
Kai, come and shake me, come and shake me. Kai, 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 lose a buyer. Kai, shut up. Ha, ha. Why you do go? Why the money, money they call? Why the logo? How many G? <laughs> 7, 7.5 G. Move you, actually, what you hear, what you hear, what you hear. What you hear, what you hear. Is it on 2 G? I mean, it's still on G. It's still on G, I mean. I mean, it's on, it has moved to 2 G. It's still on G. <laughs> well, let's give him edge. Edge, I mean. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. It's good to be here again this morning. It's a good time to be alive. This month is running already. This year will soon end. <laughs> just like that. Hope you know, hope the year will not end. I don't say just like that. Hope your life has a meaning this year. <laughs> if you don't have a meaning, like you can still have a meaning in the remaining part of it. You know that you just look back, December 34, you just say just like that. Ah, yeah, you shan't love me, Koni love me, shan't oh. Wari, 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 shan't oh. Tekpa mo sheko de, tekpa mo adura. Praise Jesus, baby. All right, financial freedom. It's been a good conversation so far. And we've been looking at God's plan of prosperity for us, his children. Glory to Jesus, baby. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you know why it always appears as if only few people get blessed in a church? It's because not everybody does the word. You understand? Not everybody does the word. Not everybody pays attention to the culture of the house. Not everybody is involved in the church. Not everybody is involved in the culture of the house. Not everybody is really into the church. So in point, just attend. They just come to service once in a while when they feel like, and they come the time they feel like coming. Praise God. So you can't expect to. Maybe I should keep. I'm not expecting anybody, but maybe I should keep it to you. Maybe if some people come, I need to say some things that people need to understand. You can't be expecting God's blessing in a church that you claim to be part of, and you are not really part of it. You come to church when you feel like coming. I mean, the day you feel like coming, and the time you feel like coming. Don't think, how will God bless you? I don't understand. How, how will God bless you? And you want God to give you the same blessing as the people that are committed, that are part of the culture. For example, one of the culture of this house is that late coming is a taboo. It's not even about this house. Church, generally. How, why should you get, go late to church? How does it make sense to you? How does it make sense to you? And you are bored. You now walk in, you're strolling again. Are you not afraid of God? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not even joking. Don't worry, I'll keep it. Let me see if some of them will still come. The late comers. I plan to armor them this morning. And I'll really spank them with the word. I will armor them. So let me keep it. Don't let me. You people are early comers. You tried. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. <laughs> so, um, so the word is not for so. Let me, not just, let me not waste it. Let me keep it for the owners. Abby? Uh-huh. Some of you came late. I know that some of you here still came late. But I will still have mercy on you. But the real, the, the real late comers, I plan to spank them this morning. I know that no matter how much you spank a stubborn child, the <laughs> stubbornness will not steal. The <laughs> stubbornness will not go away. But we'll keep spanking. We hope we'll not get tired of spanking one day. Hopefully, maybe our spanking will change their hearts. But I know it takes an encounter with God to change a man. Nobody can change a man. You can't change anybody. Ah, you can't change anybody. Man, human being. <laughs> God said cannot change a man if the man is not willing. But you have to keep disciplining. And one of the disciplines to correct is correct. You have to keep correcting. That's one of the work of a pastor. So if you see me keep talking about late coming and all of that, I wonder what's pastors, what's the issue with pastor said. The the fact that you have full pastor before my name, I showed you the issue with me. <coughs> that pastor, that pastor. So one of the concerns of a pastor is that his members are coming late. 
And really, I know who the members are. You can't be coming late and say you're a member of this church. I'm serious. You're not a member. Don't worry, let me, let me keep it. You're not a member. You just love to attend some of our services sometimes. You might have been attending for one year, two years, three years. If you're coming late and you don't come sometimes, you're not a member of the church. You just love to come around one or two times and the time you want. But you're not a member. I know the members of this church. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. In case I forget, when the latecomers come, please remind me of the thing I want to say. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So let, let them be complete. They yeah, start counting one. One of them has come. Late number, late comma number one. Let's welcome the chair, the chair lady to church. Let's welcome, let's go. You know, this is the one you are welcome. You know, since morning, God, God did not come. He was waiting for you to come first. God could not even come to our midst. He, he was waiting for our royal, uh, your, your royal highness. Oluwa Jumon, Lord. See your name, say, Oluwa Jumon. Oluwa Jumon, Lord, bad months. So God has been waiting for you. See how you just delayed God. God could not bless us. God did not come down. He has been waiting. He was standing at the door. Until you enter, he could not even enter. Because you are great. You are great, Abby. And you are greater than God. You are greater than God. You are greater than God. But you kept God waiting since. He did not enter service without you. Let's appreciate that again. Let's come on number one. <laughs> when, when they are complete, we would... We will give them their welcome address. But Sergio, let me first give you your own. It's very late to come. It's bad to come late to church. That's why I used to shake your head every time. It's bad. <laughs> Can you say it's bad? And you have to change. You're not a member of this church. You're laughing. Are you a member of this church? Are you sure? I, I, I'm not sure you're a member yet. How can you? you can, you're a member and you're coming late. I mean, I'm, not seeing, I'm not seeing you as a member yet too. I like, see your commitment, and part of your commitment is early coming, coming early to church, and coming for every service, and joining the workforce. That's how we know you are a member. Don't worry, don't really push your notes. So when they are complete, as they are entering, you'll be welcoming them for me. The late comers, be welcoming them, especially usher. Bring them to the small, to the front seat. They are the special guests. They are visiting us. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. All these things, they are part of the message. You don't remove it, though. So that when they hear it in the future, or their children hear it, or their great-great-grandchildren, they will know the way they behave to God, in case God does not bless them. So they can know the reason why God does not bless their parents. <laughs> that is because they are coming late to church. Praise God forevermore. So financial freedom, so Father, we trust you for understanding, we trust you for grace, we trust you for your blessings that are going to pour out on us this morning. Because there will be grace and there will be utterance in Jesus' name. So we'll be looking at God's plan to prosper his children. God's plan of prosperity. We'll be looking at how that God intends that his children should experience and enjoy prosperity. That prosperity is not a big deal to God for his children. Are you following me? Prosperity is one, is, is one of the basic things that God wants his children to have. I was speaking in third June that I wish above all else that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Are you following me? So, prosperity is as basic as health. <laughs> is that true? Is as what? It's as basic as health. Prosperity is as basic as health. It's not a deep thing. It's not a deep theology. It's not, it's not a deep matter. It's very simple, very cheap. Praise Jesus. And the purpose of this teaching, this series, is to bring us into the heart of God concerning prosperity. And now we can, we can receive prosperity from God. Because it is God that gives prosperity. Are you following me? It is God that does what? It is God that gives prosperity. Prosperity does not come by hard work. Are you following me? You can have money by hard work. But you can't have prosperity by hard work. Prosperity comes from God. It comes from who? It comes from God. It comes from God. Prosperity comes from God. Are you following me? 
So, God wants to give his children prosperity. So, if God wants to give his children prosperity, praise Jesus, what then should be the disposition of the children? What should they, what should they be keen on learning? They should learn how to receive prosperity. Praise Jesus. They should learn how to what? So the work of God's children is to learn how to receive what? Prosperity. Start when you are looking good. Did you plan with your brother blue and white? Ah, ah. You are just giving it to us like that. When you are looking good, let me appreciate that you went again. You are you meant to be going to all those hotels and be bringing those girls to us. Yes, be preaching to them, those girls. Go enter there with your vines and tell them about Jesus. Bring them to church. You understand? Uh huh. So, God's children must learn how to receive what? Prosperity. Because if you don't learn how to receive, even though God wants to give, are you following me? Prosperity will not still become your own. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. We are still expecting, we are still hoping like the remaining 10 late commands will come. Abi, and if they don't come, we thank God for their lives. Praise Jesus. So there's still like 10, Abi. If you can count them, it's still like 10. So you still have like 10 claps to clap. That's if they come. But I pray you won't be I pray you won't have to clap because so you won't distract me. But don't clap. If I tell you to clap, you clap. I don't tell you to clap. Don't, don't distract my teaching. Because by the time you want to clap, I might be entering another face in the teaching. And your clap can distract me. Praise God forevermore. But really, anybody amongst the church members that you have close to, that you have, you have friends to that you can talk to, it's bad to come back to church. It's very, very bad. I can keep quiet and not talk about it, but I won't be a good pastor. I won't say because you get angry that I should not say. If you like me angry, oh, what's my business? Are you coming to church on If I tell you that you're coming late and it's wrong, you're not angry, see? I'm not going to church again. Oh, you're not coming, you're not coming. When you, when you were not coming, you did like that. So, you understand? So, if you're angry, you're angry for yourself. I want the God to take away your anger so I can be blessed. So, please, talk to yourselves. Talk to yourself as a person, number one. Then talk to your fellow church members. That is bad to come late to church. God cannot bless late commerce. You know, there's a way you go to a party and you will not meet food because you went late. <laughs> you people don't know the you don't know the meaning of coming late to church. Uh, you go to a party and you went late and there's no food for you. People who went early self to some party, <laughs> they are still trusting God for food. And talk of you going late for the party. Are you with me? Some of you think it's when they are preaching that God is coming, that God comes, or that that's when they will share the blessing. Uh, or that is, is when the choir is singing, or when they are leading prayer. As you are entering, they are marking attendance. You understand? And once you come late, except they have mercy on you, that day is just like you didn't come. It's like you didn't come. You wasted your time. I'm, I'm saying this over and over, over again. Stop coming late to church. Stop coming late to church. Don't say I do not want you. Now we are teaching on prosperity. You are happy. If I start teaching, you'll be dancing, you'll be clapping, you'll be happy. These are the things that allow for prosperity that you are not practicing. We've never even entered the, the big, big matters. We are still coming up. We are still talking of coming to church number one and coming early. You are still struggling with that one. When I not start talking to you about giving, <laughs> some of you are not even, you are not even giving your tithe. Some of you don't give offering. Are you happy when I talk about prosperity? God wants you to prosper. You're happy. <laughs> I pity my people. Huh? I pity you. But, but those who are my people who hear me. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Those who are really my people who hear what I'm saying and practice and will become prosperous. So don't just be excited at this teaching though. Because I see that. I, I really see it every Sunday when I teach you these things. You are very excited. <laughs> but excitement does not mean prosperity you. It's not, my, it's not the teaching that, that you are hearing. It's not how the word sounds to you that brings prosperity. It's, how, it's your practice of it that guarantees prosperity. Praise Jesus. And seriously, don't worry, we'll get to that part. I'm, talking about, I'm going to talk about four principles that allows you to receive prosperity from God. And you'll find that coming to church and coming early is part of it. Because that's the major way to, to prove your your love for God and his kingdom, your focus on God's kingdom. 
Are you following me? So you, you, you see that the, the, the principles of prosperity are very, very cheap. They are very cheap that we don't practice them. That's why God doesn't bless us. Are you following me? And one of the simplest is, is just coming to church and coming early. It's very simple. It's not simple. What are, what, are you, what, are, what are you doing at home? From Monday to you, which day you've been at home, what are you doing? What, are, what that home, what has it given you? Nothing. It's, the, it's lack of discipline. Hmm? You should watch it. So God's children must learn how to what? How to receive blessings from God. How to receive prosperity from God. Praise Jesus forevermore. And I told us last week that as a child of God, you are deserving of what? Of every good thing. Why? Because you are well beloved. You understand? Beloved, I wish the other down to be well beloved guys. So, I said that if you are well beloved, it means that what? You are well deserving. You are well deserving. He who is well beloved is well deserving. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Is well deserving. So you must understand as a child of God that you deserve every good thing of life. You deserve the blessing of God. You deserve to be prosperous. Praise Jesus forevermore. So I'll show us one more scripture. Then I'll show us a certain scripture to define what I mean by financial freedom. Go to Romans chapter 8 from verse 29. Let me show us something again to give you the proper mindset about prosperity and God's plan for your life. Praise Jesus forevermore. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. Now look at it. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God does what? If God be for us, who can be against us? I was reading this scripture this morning and a weight was resting upon my heart. That means I have no cause to be afraid in life. Are you following me? I have no cause to be what? To be afraid in life. I have no cause to try to please anybody at the expense of God. I have no cause to try to make anybody like me. Are you following me? Are you following me? Guys, are you with me? See, you know the meaning of this scripture that if God bids for me, anybody can go to hell. That's why with anybody. Who can be against us? Like, who can be against me? Who can be against me? Who can be against me? Can you hear me? Appreciate the command number two. Appreciate, 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 appreciate. You are welcome. Royal, your, your, your royal highness, the queen. You are welcome, ma. The queen. You are welcome. Your counterparts, let's hope they will, they will come and join you in your late coming seat. Praise God forevermore. You, you, are start, you are coming so late that your husband has even stopped coming to church, finally. Yes. It's your late coming that has affected your husband. You know, when you come late, your husband won't come to church again. Last week Sunday was, was, was your husband around. Was he in church? Answer me. Two Sundays ago, was he in church? Today's third Sunday, is not in church because you have been coming late. The Lord have mercy on you. But it's wrong to, I'm serious. See the time you're coming to church, to 10. You're not even ashamed of yourself, to 10. You are ashamed. And you're catwalking to come to church. You didn't run that they should ask you what was happening. Mama, ma, ma, mama with baby, why are you running now? You said them, I'm late. They ask you, we're still catwalking, catwalking, catwalking. Stop it, though. To 10. Ah. Talk to the man. Let, let, let people hear your voice. Are you ashamed of yourself or not? I am. You are. Be careful. Stop coming late to church. It's, God does not like it. 
See, you're already teaching this small baby. Innocent boy, you're already teaching him late coming. Sister Marachi, stop. Now, let me call your name. That's so why they don't know who I'm talking. Sister Marachi. So that in case your baby hears the message in future, and if God does not bless you because of late coming, your son will know why. Stop coming late to church. I'm serious. Even though I'm saying it and it's like I'm laughing, but I'm really, really serious. It's something that is, I'm not happy about. Hmm? Are you not, it's like you're not a member of this church. You're not a member of this church. You're a member of this church. So why are you coming late to church? Do, does this church look like the church where their members go late? So why are you coming late if you're a member of the church? Stop it. Church starts 8 o'clock. You're not supposed to be a worker already. You'll spend close to one year in this church. You are not in the workforce. You are not in anything. And you are still coming late. Be careful. Service starts by 8 o'clock. No excuse. Lord, you have mercy on you in Jesus' name. But where is your husband? What is happening to your husband? Hmm? He traveled. He's at home. Praise God. So, if God be for us, who can be, it's like this cap is disturbing me, it's not letting breeze blow my head. Who can what? Be against us. Praise Jesus. Oh, no, it's our church, Abby. Okay, people that will hear the message, is their business. It's not, we are talking to our church members. We're not begging to come and hear, to hear the message when they listen to it. So, we are talking family matter. So we are not, we are not professional, we are not pro, pro, professional preachers. I want to preach professionally. Let them not see any. My church members, are you enjoying the preaching? Are you sure? Samashi, are you enjoying it? Uh-huh. Keep enjoying it. That's how you grow and you'll be blessed. Though. Don't edit, don't remove all this thing though. It's part of our church something. Praise God. If God be for us, who can be against us? So my brothers and my sisters, nobody can be against you in life. Samashi, do you understand? Can you say God is for me? Nobody can be against me. And this nobody, see, let, let me explain. If God be for us, who can be against us? It means, number one, nobody can be against me. Number two, anybody that, to, anybody that chooses to be against me is against me at his own detriment. You understand? If you choose to be against me, I don't send you. You are against me at your own what? Risk. You understand? It's risky for what? For someone to be against me. Why? Because God is for me. You understand? It's risky. So, don't try and please people. Don't try and... Hey. You, know, you know that this person will hinder you from serving God. We hinder you from fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And because you want to gain one thing or the other from the person, you are trying to, hey, just like me, oh. let me just try and please him. Oh. Are you stressing yourself? If God be for me, who can be against me? Whoever wants to be against me can as well go, out, go to hell. You understand? But many times we don't have this kind of at disposition because we are not even sure God is for us. Number one, we are not sure God is, God is for us. And practically also, we know, we know ourselves that God is not for us. <laughs> there are two sides of this thing, though. Number one, positionally, do you understand? By fact, by the fact of salvation, God is for us. Because we are saved. But in experience, many of you know that God is not for you. Because you still are not for him. You understand? So many of, the reason why some of you are afraid in life is because, because you know that God is not for you. And how do you know how do you know God is not for you? Tell me, how do you know? Because even though sometimes when you read this scripture, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you say, no be, no be mean this Bible, they follow talk. <laughs> that God for me. Ah. You know he's not, you know he's not talking to you. Have, have you read some, some things in scripture like that? Very good things, and your mind is telling, ah. This thing, oh, yeah, I'm still. Why do you say so? So why do you think God is not for you when you read this scripture? Or you hear it. I don't know before me, Jerry. Because you, you are not, you are not for what. 
you are not for God. So, positionally, God is for you because you are saved. Are you following me? Experientially, God is for you because you are for God. God is for you because you are sold out to him. God is for you because you are committed to his kingdom, to his cause. Are you following me? And if that, is, if that is the case, my brother, anybody that wants to go can go. Anybody that wants to get out of your life can get out. Anybody that, that stands against you does so at his own disadvantage. To his own disadvantage, at his own risk. You understand? See, it's risky to be against me because God is for me. When me I say God is for me, I mean God is for me because I'm saved and God is for me because I'm for him. I'm so down to his kingdom. It's risky to, you can't be, why do you want to be against me? I'm not saying why do you want to be against that? Please don't be against me like, how, 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 how will you survive it? And I'm saying this things practically. I know where I'm coming from. I know the battles that have risen up. I know the battles we've, we've, we've overcome by the, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of God. I know the family I came from. You guys can't even understand what I'm talking about. So me, when I'm saying nobody can be against me, like as your own risk, I know what I'm talking about. Why? Because I'm for God. Because God is for me. I'm for him. Why am I living? I'm living for this God. I don't have anything. To, I don't have. I don't live for any other thing. So really, in experience, if God will be for you, I know it's ready for you, new creation realities, yes. <laughs> but experience, if it's going to be for you, you have to what? You have to be for him. You have to be for him. You have to be for him. That's the only, that's the only place where who can, like, who can be against me? Who will you be? I will not help you. I will not help you. Who are you to help me? Who, who are you that you want to help me before? You know, some people are so proud. I won't help you in life. Help me. You will help me. How? How will you not help me? Who, who, do you, who told you you have my help? Who told you you are capable? How, how, how did you enter your mother and say you will not help me? Me that God is for. Me that God is blessing you because of me. <laughs> my money is with you. They are saying you will not help me. You will not give me. They will collect it from me and give somebody else. Guys, you have to come to this place where you are sure of life. Because God is for you. Can you say God is for me? Who can be against me? Like, who is that person? Guys, to be a Christian is powerful. Let me really stay on the positional part. So that you people, we, we won't appreciate that. To be a Christian is what? It's powerful. To just be a child of God is just powerful. Because you are a child of God, who can be against you? Then they do me from my papa house. Who oh, they do you? Why don't you do them back? You do me, I do you. God no go verse. <laughs> if I go go verse for you, no go verse for me. When I do you. <laughs> if you do me, God go verse. Me, if I do you, God go happy. I go chop your eyes. <laughs> Guys, you are a child of God and you are powerful. You are well beloved, right? And you are powerful. Who can be against you? Who is that uncle that says, without me in life, you cannot make it? Without me. You know some people are like that? Without me. Without you, who are you? Guys, you are powerful. You are a child of God. And life must respond to you. Praise God forevermore. So you have to be bold. Because you are a Christian. You have to be bold. Because you are a child of God. And you have to understand that nobody has the capacity to stand against you. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Samarashi, you are looking so good. You are looking so beautiful. Can you hear me appreciate Samarashi? Just looking so Just sit down to just sit down to to cool, to cool your mind. Can you hear me appreciate late command number three? Our, our beloved Rachel. Let me have you Rachel. Let's come on number three. We are still counting. We are still counting. Rachel, how are you? Ah, ah. 
God loves you so much. See, she came late and Osha is still talking. What are you saying? You, Osha, you are never ashamed of yourself. <laughs> she came late and said, Jesus, what are you just doing? Ah, she wants to charge her phone. Don't, no, don't charge her phone. What do you want to do? Why do they follow and talk? You don't, you, you don't ask whether, whether, whether we don't share food. <laughs> we don't share them before you go. Richie, 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 how many times I call you? When you go stop to the come little church? When? Next week. <laughs> Richie, stop this thing. See your children. Two children, you're already teaching them bad things. It's bad to go to church. I'm serious. God is not happy. Change, change. See your colleagues, they also came later. After. It's, not only you that, it's not only you that are. See, see your colleagues. You see, they are, they are, they are sitting around themselves. Colleagues, brothers and sisters in Christ. So, Rachel, please. That please is not, it's not like I'm begging you. you understand? That please does not mean please now. It means for your life, for, your, for the sake of your destiny and your glory. You understand? Please don't come in late to church. If you want God to bless you, you have to stop coming late to church. God cannot take you serious if you are coming late to church. It means you are not taking church serious. Hmm? Please stop it. Eh? God is not happy. Do you understand? Will you stop? If you like be whining me, you are whining God. And God, God said, will whine you back. And if God whine you, you know the meaning. So, you have to stop coming late to church. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Everyone. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Glory to Jesus forevermore. It's like as they come, it's like my abuse is reducing. I don't, it's not thick like when I first gave Sister John. The one I gave Sister Rachel again went down. Rachel John went down. I will build it up. I will build my, my abuse and the gates of heaven will not prevail. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. If my wife hears this message, she will nearly abuse my life. <laughs> Please don't let my wife download the message. Don't let her have access to it. You say I'm playing too much in church. If God be for us, who can be against us? Now look at us. Look at the next verse. Charge for her, charge for her, charge for her. She's, she's our church member. She's qualified. Please look at it. This is where I'm going about prosperity. Are you ready, my friends? He that spared not his own son. We're talking about what? Financial freedom. And that God wants you to prosper because you are what? His children, his child. Every child of God is entitled to prosperity. Understand? Prosperity is the right of God's children. I'm sure Dr. is not sleeping. He's just trying to rub his eyes. Praise Jesus forevermore. He that spared not his own son, please look at this carefully. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for what? For us all, for our sin, for our justification, for our salvation. That God did not spare who? His own son. Who is that his son? Jesus. That God did not spare Jesus, but delivered Jesus up for us. He, he gave Jesus to die for us. Now look at the next statement. It's so powerful. See, see, see. If you can capture this scripture, you will know that poverty should not find a way into your life. You know that poverty should not be your friend. You will know that lack should not be excused by you. If you can, if you can grab this, this scripture and receive the revelation of this scripture, you begin to understand that lack is never part of God's plan for you. You begin to understand that lack cannot be God's plan for you. That poverty can never be God's plan for you. You will stop rationalizing lack. You will stop rationalizing poverty. You will stop embracing it. You will fight it as the demon that it is. Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Please look at this carefully. How shall he not work? How shall he not with him also work? Freely, uh huh, give us what? Talk to me. Freely give us what? How many things? All things. What is the meaning of all things? All things means all things. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? How 
shall it not with him also freely give us all things? Oh. Friends, I pray that the revelation of these things will done to your heart. Huh. How many of you have Jesus here? Raise your hand if you have Jesus. Ah. Light, you're not sure you have Jesus. To have Jesus to be born again is simple. It's not have, have, have. It's not have. The Greek word of have is avi. <laughs> How many of you have Jesus? Raise your hand. Raise your hand very well if you have Jesus. We all have Jesus, right? So why do you think to have money is a big deal? I mean, how many do you think you are undeserving of prosperity? Why do you think you are undeserving of wealth when you have Jesus? Now, don't forget what the Bible says. He does spare not his own son. Guys, you need to understand what the son of God is. The greatest treasure that God has is his son. Are you with me? Jesus is what is the greatest treasure of God. Are you with me? Oh, talk about, you need to come and sit here. That place is bad for you. Stand up fast, fast. Come and sit here. Come and sit where, where there's grace. There's no grace in that place. <laughs> no grace in that corner. That, that, that corner will, be, will deprive you of prosperity. <laughs> come, 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 come. Change your seat. Change your seat. <laughs> change your seat before they change you. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <remember. laughs> so, the Son of God, Jesus... Is the most expensive thing that God has. Hmm? Jesus is the greatest treasure of God. If you, if I, if you close your eyes again, you'll not like what I'll do to you. You better you come here. Jesus is what? Is the what? Is the greatest treasure of God. In all the universe. In eternity and in time. Talk, I want to be seeing your face. Because I need to see you prosper. It's part of my plan. And that sleep will take away your prosperity, I know. The better you come here, let me be seeing your face. Let me be sure that you will prosper. If you are, if you are sleeping, I'm not sure you will prosper. So let me, because you cannot hear what I'm saying. And it's what I'm saying that will make you prosper. Hey, good. I'm sure you will prosper. If you sleep, I can knock your head. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. So, Jesus is the highest treasure of God. Jesus is the greatest thing that God has. Jesus is the highest possession of God. Hey, guys, may you, may God open your eyes to see Jesus. When I say Jesus, when I say see Jesus, I don't mean see a vision. To see the cost of Jesus. To see how treasurable Jesus is. To see what Jesus represents to God. Jesus is the highest what, treasure of God. It's the greatest thing that God has. Jesus is the greatest possession of God. Jesus is the costliest thing that God has. Jesus is the most expensive thing that God has. Jesus is the most beautiful thing that, that God has. And that most beautiful thing, that most expensive thing, that greatest treasure, that says the what? He has given him to you. Are you following me? He has given him what to who? He now say, how shall he know it? He does that he's surprised. God is surprised that your mind cannot imagine prosperity. God is surprised that you're not thinking greatness. God is surprised that you're not thinking big. God is surprised that you're not thinking that you, you deserve prosperity. Why? He's surprised. He's surprised why? Because I've given you my son already. I've given you the greatest thing I can give you. Guys, let me not lie to you. The greatest thing God can give you is not money. It's not prosperity. Are you with me? The greatest thing is not even spiritual blessings. Hey! The greatest thing God can give you is Jesus. And he has given him to you. Are you following me? Are you following me? The greatest thing God can give you is not even, is not even power. The greatest thing God can give you is Jesus, his son. And he has given you. So he's surprised that how shall he know with him also freely give us all things. So God is saying to us that come on, if I've given you my highest possession, are you following me? Then I can give you anything. You can receive anything from me. Some of us don't know that we can receive anything from God. 
Because we don't even know the value of what we have received already. Hmm. You didn't get that. You don't know you can what? Receive anything from God. Why? Because you don't know the value of what you have received. And what have you received? Jesus. You have received Jesus into your heart. You have received Jesus into your life. Are you following me? But you don't know the value of Jesus in the eyes of God. You don't know how costly Jesus is. So you don't know that you can receive anything from God. You think it's a big deal for God to give you money? You think it's a big, big deal for God to give you prosperity? Was it a big deal for God to give you Jesus? It wasn't a big deal. He gave him to you freely. Are you following me? Guys, your, the fact that God has given Jesus to you should spoil your heart to desire prosperity. I know some of you, <laughs> you think it's easier to have Jesus than to have prosperity. <laughs> is, it, is it not true? You think it's easier to have Jesus than to have prosperity? So, you think, you think prosperity is very far about Jesus? Uh, every, everybody get Jesus. Right? <laughs> everybody get Jesus. Everybody get Jesus. Everybody get Jesus. So, you think it's easier for you to have Jesus than to have $10 billion? Why? Why? Tell me why. Because you think that $10 billion is expensive than Jesus. That's your thought. You might not think it like that, but that, that's what you are thinking. Are you following? You get between Jesus and ten billion dollars. Ah, oh, to get Jesus, they very easy. Ten billion dollars, look, we bear. Ten billion dollars, look, we bear. Jesus, Jesus, will lead to get Jesus. Just confess your sins and Lord, come into my heart. You get Jesus, ten billion dollars. Ah, that one foul. Why? Because in your estimate, $10 billion is more than Jesus. Are you following me? Because you don't even know the words of Jesus. Are you with me? So, when you know that Jesus is the greatest treasure of God, you will know that $10 billion is nothing. That you having $10 billion is what? Is nothing. Like it is what? I already have the greatest thing. So why can't I, why, why to, if Jesus is not, oh friends, can you hear me? <laughs> See, if Jesus is not too much for me, why should anything be too much for me? <laughs> Are you following me? Are you with me? See, nothing is too much for me. Why? Because Jesus is not too much for me. If Jesus were too much for me, I would not have him. But I have him, I hear you, and you have Jesus. The proof that you have Jesus, are you following me? Are you following? The proof that Jesus is not too much for you is that what? You have him already. Are you following me? So Jesus is not too much for you to have. So why should anything be too much for you to have? Are you following me? Child of God, can you hear me? Nothing is too much for you to have. Why? Because Jesus is not too much for you to have. You already have him. Are you following me? And the truth is, it is more difficult for one to have Jesus than to have prosperity. Are you following me? Hey, guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? In your eyes, you are thinking it's hard because you don't, because money is big in your eyes. Prosperity is big. Big, good things of life are very big. Jesus is not very small. You don't think they are more expensive than Jesus. But it's harder, are you following me? It is harder for man to have Jesus than to have prosperity. It's harder for a man to have Jesus in his life, in his heart, are you following me, than to have hundred trillion dollars. It's harder. Why? Because to have Jesus, God had to kill. If I can use that word. Are you following me? To have Jesus involved death. Jesus had to die for us to have him. Are you following me? Oh, you think, you think if you don't know that, you think you'll be able to have him? No, 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 no. You had Jesus, you have Jesus because Jesus Christ did what? He died. That means of spear delivered him up. He died. 
He was humiliated. He came down from glory, emptied himself of all that represents God. Are you following me? And he died a criminal death, a shameful death on the cross. Are you following me? The, you need to understand the path. Are you following me? That it, the, the, the pathway that Jesus trod so that you can have him. You need to understand what it cost God to give you Jesus. Can I talk to you? It costs God everything to give you Jesus. But it doesn't cost God anything to give you everything. You didn't, you didn't get that. It costs God what? It costs God everything to give you what? Jesus. Because Jesus is everything that God has. But it doesn't cost God anything to give you everything. But we have overestimated the things of life. We have overestimated material prosperity. We have overestimated prosperity things of life. Are you following me? That we think they are more expensive than Jesus. It costs God. He said, if he delivered his own, how shall he not with him also? Now look at it. I said it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't cost God what? Anything to what? To give us what? All things. Are you following me? He that spared not his own son, but what? Delivered him up. Please look at look at what it used with Jesus, the word it used with Jesus, and the word it used with every with all things. For Jesus, it used the word delivered. It was not a small thing. Are you following? He said he delivered him up for us. It was not a small thing. It's a father watching his own son die. But when it comes to what he is saying, what? How shall I know with him also freely give us? All things doesn't cost him anything to give us all things. Guys, are you are you getting the gist? For God to make you a millionaire doesn't cost him anything. For God to prosper, it doesn't cost him what? Doesn't cost him anything. Because nothing is as big as Jesus. And he has given you Jesus. And how did he give you Jesus? He gave you Jesus freely. He also gave you Jesus freely. He gave you freely. You didn't pay for it. Did you pay for Jesus? He gave you freely. Freely. So, are you following me? See, if you have received Jesus into your heart, are you following me? Nothing is too much for you to receive. Nothing is too much now for a child of God. These are the church patterns that must fill your heart so you can walk in prosperity. So you can go before God boldly, are you following me? And ask for $10 billion. There's someone going to ask for something from God and you are saying, you are, you are thinking of what you are asking for is not too much. Are you following me? Practically. Some of us, when we pray, when we, when we want to say, God, oh Jesus, fill me with your life. Fill me with your life. Oh Father, I want more of you. I want more of your son. Fill me with your son. Fill me with the life of your son. Fill me. Jesus, fill me. Fill me. When you are praying, Jesus, fill me. Do you feel any... Do you feel any, what do you do, any restriction? Do you feel any shame? Do you feel, do you feel any restriction? Like you're asking for too much. You say, Lord, feel me, feel me. You can't kabash, kalabo, sabaka, shala. You don't stammer. Why? Because you're asking for Jesus. <laughs> or if you want to ask for, <laughs> some of you want to ask for even a good phone. You know you can stammer. <laughs> There are few of you that can, that can, that can tell God to give you $10 billion. Because when, when you want to go to New York, they be like, ah, hey, oh God, not be thinking that, <laughs> hey, I'm covetous. Some of you are afraid to ask God for good things. You are stammering. You are thinking, what will God be thinking about me? Hey, we'll go to my lumber, lower we'll lunch. Hey, what will he be thinking? Hope he won't think I'm a bad person. But you already asked for his son. You're asking for a son without thinking you're a bad person. Because you don't know that his son is more expensive than that thing you're asking for. <laughs> you understand? You're asking, for, oh, with God, fill me with your son, fill me, Jesus, fill me, fill me with Jesus, fill me with more of Jesus, fill me with more of Jesus. And you're enjoying the prayer. But when it comes to God, give me a good car. God, I want a job of $50,000 per month. You're already stammering, you're staggering. You're afraid. Light, you understand that, me? Oh, yeah. 
Guys, go here, go Why? If I can ask for Jesus freely, that God should me with more of Jesus, why can I not ask for every other thing freely? So it comes to the place of understanding. You've not come to comprehend that Jesus is the most expensive thing that God has, that God can ever give you. Are you following me? Are you with me? Praise God. I have $10 billion. Are you following me? I have an iPhone 14. I have a Samsung Galaxy Fold Fold 4. Are you following me? And I have an iPhone, maybe an iPhone 11. Are you with me? Now, the $10 billion is all the money I have. It's all my, are you following me? All my assets. Are you following me? That's the cost of, that's all the money I have. Now, that $10 billion, I give it to you. Without you asking me. Are you following me? I gave it to you and you received it. And I told her, why am I giving you this? Because I love you. Are you following me? Praise God. Now, I have three phones, right? An iPhone 14. I have an iPhone 11. I have Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. Are you following me? Don't forget, I've given you $10 billion. All the money I have. Now, you now need an iPhone 14. You are not afraid to come and ask me. You are thinking that I will not give you. Guys, you, can you hear me? I've given you $10 billion, all the money I have. And I told you it's all the money I have. And you too, you know that that's all the money I have. And I give you all the $10 billion. You now need an iPhone 14, and I have it. You now said, ah, you want to come and ask me. You now say, hey. If I go and ask him for iPhone 14, hope iPhone 14 is not too much for him to give me. Hope it's not too much for me to ask for an iPhone 14 from him. Hope he will be able to give me. Guys, answer yourself that question. For you to even think that you are a stupid person. Is that not a stupid person? Someone that gave you how much? $10 billion. All the money he has. You are now thinking that, oh, he won't give me iPhone 14, Jerry. He can't give me. It's too much for him to give me. Between ten billion dollars and iPhone fourteen, how many iPhone fourteen will ten billion dollars buy? It will buy iPhone fourteen for it will buy iPhone fourteen for, for everybody in the world. Abi, Abi na, almost everybody in the world. Abi, ten billion dollars will, will buy iPhone fourteen for almost everybody in the world. I gave you ten billion dollars, all the money I have. You are now doubting if I can give you an iPhone fourteen. Hope, hope. That I can't give you that it's too much for me to give you. That it's too big. Do you understand? Now, it's coming alive to you because I'm using what you can understand. But that's the way it is with Jesus and prosperity and the things of life. It's even more than that. Guys, you understand? Someone that can give you $10 billion, all the money he has, you should ne- for you to think that for him to give you iPhone 14 or a car, are you following me? That it is too big, that it will be too much for him, that he won't be able to afford it, that it is too big, or it's too big for, for him to give you. You have to be very sick. You have to, they, have, they have to go and do a mental check for you, a mental check. Because it's not normal for you to think that way. Are you following me? See how many Christians, many of us are not normal. We are abnormal Christians. We freely receive Jesus from God, but we don't know we can also freely receive every other thing, even, even though the Bible says so. We think, we think every other thing is big. We think you are not deserving. We think it's too much. What's oh, too much? What's oh, too much? Guys, nothing is too much for you. You have Jesus already. You have Jesus already, right? And that's the, that's the greatest thing now that God can ever give. So, God cannot be so stingy. Let's even assume he wants, let's assume he wants to manage. <laughs> are you following me? Let's assume he wants to manage. Let's assume he, he, he doesn't want all this resources. All his resources to finish. It can't be so stingy after giving you Jesus all what he has. He's now so stingy to give you money. He's stingy to give you a car, to give you a good house, to give you a good job. How? Or he's so poor that he can't give you. Do you know the cost of Jesus? Even, do, you, do you even know the cost of your own soul? You, you, your own soul, one soul. Your soul is the expense and all the world put together. Imagine Jesus. Guys, you know why I'm teaching you these things? Because prosperity must be cheap to you. 
It must be cheap. And it's really cheap. It must be cheap to your heart first. It must be cheap to your mind first. And that's where I started this teaching from. It's the battle in your mind. My friend, God can give you anything. And you deserve to receive anything from God. Why? Because you are not undeserving of Jesus. You were not undeserving to receive Christ. Are you following me? Are you following me? God gave you Jesus. He gave Christ to you. So why should, why should he hold back anything from you? And that's what the scripture is saying. He that spent not his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall he not with him? Freely give up. Also, you can that word also. In addition. So you see that Jesus is even the main thing that God wants to give us. Every other thing is what? It's also. It's Jara. Can you say it's Jara? No matter how big the prosperity is, is it is what? It is Jara. Are you following me? You bought a bag of rice, a bag of curry, and a bag of beans from somebody. Are you following me? Praise God. And you now took maybe some curry from the person's container to just taste, to eat. And person, you've paid for the, the, the things you bought. Oh. Are you following me? The person is now abusing you that you're a poor person. That why you person is now angry with you and fighting with you. <laughs> you understand? Because you took that small thing. Person is now angry and abusing and insulting you. That you're a poor person. Are you following me? Does the person have sense? Why does he want to compare that thing you took to what you bought? The thing you took is called what? Jara. There's nothing in Jara. You don't pay for Jara. In fact, the person will, if you take small, say, the person can even give you one direct extra. Because, because of the original thing you bought, because of the main thing you bought. If you, see, if you stay there and you're eating the gari, you stay there for pennies and you're eating, the person cannot complain. The person cannot complain. Are you following me? Because how many do you want to eat? You just bought one bag of gari, one bag of beans, one bag of rice, one bag of semo, one 50 liters of oil. You now stood there and now tasting the gari. Ah, the person will say, oh God, you want more? Maybe make I be a packer. Because it's jara. Jara is what? Nothing. Jara is not, Jara has no cost. Okay, how much will you pay for that one that you are eating? How much will you pay? Which one did you pay for? The main thing. Oh, Jesus has paid the price with his life. That's why Jesus is the main thing. You see? He's the main thing. You understand? He's the one that was paid for. He's the offering, he's the cost, he's the price, he's everything. Are you following me? Jesus is the one that was paid for. Is the offering, is the offerer, is everything. Every other thing is what? Is Jara. So why are you stressing yourself on Jara? Why do you think, why do you think Jara, why, why are you telling, why are you think, thinking that Jara is a big gift for God to give you? Jara. You see the word also. I shall not written also freely give us all things. Freely. Also. Guys, can I tell you? Prosperity is Jara. Can you say it's Jara? It's Jara now. Is Jara. The big deal is Jesus. And you have the big deal already. If I have the big deal, I can have the Jara. Is that you want? Are you having a Jara already? <laughs> Praise Jesus. If I have the big deal, I can have the what? If I buy one bag of Gary, you will give me three Dirikas as Jara. You don't me asking. If I buy one bag of Gary and I ask for Jara, you can't say I'm asking for too much. You will give me Jara. I've not even bought one bag. I only bought three directors. You will still say put Jara. If I buy pepper 500, I will say put Jara. See, when you buy the original, you have a right to Jara. Guys, can you hear me? When you buy the mention, you have a right to what? A Jara. To, to Jara. How many of you used to ask for PC for Jara whenever you buy something? How many of you? You ask for Jara for Fisi. Why do you ask for Jara? Because you think you have the right to it. Now, you didn't buy anything from, from the person. You just say, give me, give me Fisi now. <laughs> you went to where? <laughs> you went to a book that is selling suya. A book that is selling suya. You didn't plan to buy. You didn't buy. 
And I say, I'm okay, give, give me fisi now. Give me fisi. Fisi suya. It will fisi your hand with that knife. <laughs> now, why, can, why can't you ask for fisi for what you didn't buy in the original? Why? Because you didn't buy anything. So, you see, if you have not bought something, if you have not bought anything, you have no right to what? To fisi. You have no right to jara. So, the person that has the right to jara is the one that has what? That has bought the original goods. Are you following me? So, you see, when you ask for jara, are you afraid? Talk to me. When you ask for jara, are you afraid? When you ask for jara, do you, th- do you think the person will say no? Have you ever bought something and you ask for jara and they say no? Since I was a child up to now, I've never bought something and asked for jara and they said no. They've not said no before. Talk to me. Have they said no to you asking for jara? Is that you want to say no to you before? So, have they said no? Talk where? Have they said no to you asking for jara? Are you following me? Because jara becomes your right. Are you following me? When you buy the original good, when you purchase. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Jara becomes your what? Your right. So in your mind, you just know that Jara is your right. Praise God. Are you following me? So, why are you able to ask for Jara? Because you know it's your right. Why? Because you've purchased the main thing. Oh my Jesus. God has given us the main thing. He has given us Jesus. So we have right to the Jaras. We have right to what? To the Jaras. Prosperity is Jara for me because I've purchased the main thing. I have this Jesus. Guys, are you getting it? Mommy, it's good to see you. I'm sorry they brought, they brought you late to church. Mommy, sorry for that they brought you late. Your children brought you late to church. I know you're not happy that you came late to church. Are you happy? Mama, you're not happy that you came late to you. You know, you're not happy that you came late to church. And you, mommy. 1942 and I want church. So I be in why did you why did you bring Mama Lee to church? It's not you, it's your husband. It's not your husband. We don't forgive you. Mr. Larry, what in tea what in tea blames in you? Why can't you mama pray the church? Kilo de. And you know to call. And you pray the church. Please. It's wrong. God does not like it. Hmm? She get. You know, no or drunk. It is not well. Come early to church. She get. Bring your family early to church. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So you see, you have the main thing already. Can you say I have the main thing already? You have the main thing. You have Jesus. You have Jesus. Are you following me? You have Jesus. You have right to the jara. If naturally you purchase things and you can ask for jara, why can you not receive jara when you already have Jesus? How shall it not with him also? Can you say also? Freely give us all things. Do you know what he's saying? That God will be a bad person if he cannot give us all things after giving up Jesus. He will be a bad businesswoman if you cannot give me jara after I bought pepper five hundred naira from you. You cannot give me one jara. You know, you know, you know, because of jara, I, I can drop what I bought from you. I can say I'm not buying again. You know, you know. <laughs> there are people who have dropped or jara because of jara. Because jara, see, sometimes. That jara say, "Oh man, can't allow that you got a law." Is that not true? Bang fisi, bang fisi. To bang fisi, I'm your ramo. How many of you here have dropped? I've, I've said, "I'm not buying again." God does not want to put jara. Some of you have done it before. Because it, it, it's painful. How, how can I? It's painful, right? How can I buy one for you with my money and you cannot? You say you don't want to give me jara. There's the way it pains. You are a bad person if you can't give me Jara. You understand? So that's what, that's what the scripture is saying. Now how shall you know with him also? How? How? Even when you buy something, they give you Jara. How? God, how shall you know with him also? How? How will God not also? He said God is not a bad person. Guys, all these good things of life, they are Jara. 
the Ajara. I shall not with him, Philly. I shall not with him also. Philly give us how many things? All things. Can you say all things? Thank God. Thank God the Bible speaks in this way. For those that love to spiritualize everything, and just pursue God. He's talking about spiritual things. No. It is a spiritual thing. It says all things. Both spiritual, physical, material, everything. Abina, in case our brothers that love to just follow Jesus, just pursue Jesus, in case they want to lie to us, the Bible already says all things. So if you want to say it's, it's just eternal life, it's eternal life, we say eternal life is part of it. Because eternal life is not all things. It says all things. And thank God, thank God, thank God, there's another person in Peter that says all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now we can say it's life and godliness. But this one says all things. He didn't put life and godliness. Hmm? And this, this same thing I was speaking in, you know, you know, it's poor that, that Oh, it's not. It's more that, that ah, this is gonna change my scripture. Don't confuse me now. He has brought me to Peter. Romans. You know, it's Paul that wrote this scripture. He said he was saying to Timothy that God that gives what that gives us all things richly to enjoy. All things. So it's all things means all things. Are you following, my friends? So, so friends, your prosperity is what is what is Jara. It's not the main thing. Can you say, I, I have the main thing? You have the main thing. Why should you not have the jara? Why should the jara be the big deal? After paying 5,000 naira for rice, are you following me? They now put jara. You now say you want jara. They now say that jara is 10,000. <laughs> they say jara is 10,000. Tell me, how much is Jara? How much is Jara? Jara does not have any price. Because you have paid the real price. Oh, Jesus is the real price, my friends. And even though this is not what I want to really stay on, I want to really talk about prosperity. See, for Jesus to be the real price, you, you can begin to see the intention of God. That means Jesus is what, is what God wants you to, to have, actually. Jesus is the greatest plan of God for you. So all these people running after money, running after good job, doing everything, without Jesus, you are stressing yourself. Jesus is a big deal. God's plan is that you will come and know Jesus. Is that Jesus Christ will be revealed in you. Is that Jesus will come into your heart. Is that Jesus will be glorified in you. Is that you, you grow more and more to be like Jesus. Are you following me? Jesus is the big deal. So what is your money, money, money? Ah, I don't have time for church. Why? I'm looking for money. I'm looking for money. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. You are chasing Jara. You are chasing what? No money. No food. No house. No car. No this. That's why I don't have time for Jesus. I don't have time for God. Yeah, yeah. You have time for Jara. You don't have time for, for Jesus. Whereas, naturally, is when you buy the meeting that you what? You receive the Jara. So, that Jesus you are running from, that you don't have time for, is actually what? Is the one that will qualify you to receive what? All things. Jara. Can you see why many of us are far from prosperity? Because we, we don't even know that Jesus Christ is the main thing. We don't know. We run from Jesus. We run from his house. We run from his work. We are not committed to him. We don't, and we are, wow, what, what are we chasing? Jara, because we think that Jara is the main thing. But even when you say you, you only receive Jara after buying something. So yeah, what do, what do, what do we need to purchase? What do we need to have? It's Jesus. When that Jesus is really in our heart, when he's dear to us, when he comes dear to us, the Bible says all things is Jara. Oh, how many of you love Jara? I love Jara. Because the Jara of God is not, you don't know how you put those self for you. Don't you put Jara? It, 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 it will look like they are fighting. Say, I shall buy, I shall, I shall take, I shall, I shall put it somehow. You know, not some people will put it and take it back. Oh, but you know the, the Jara of God? Tell me the Jara of God. And all things. All. All of it, everything, anything you can name, anything you can think of. It says all things. That's God's own jara. You know, there's no way you can buy rice, buy rice, buy rice, buy rice, buy rice. And they will give you one EK as you see. 
<laughs> they know you can buy five bags. That they'll give you half bag, Ganjara. I don't know if you have both five bags one, they give you half bag, Ganjara. Are you following me? They know, they know you can go and eat in a restaurant. You bought all the food, you can buy, buy bought all the meat. They don't give you three meat as jara. They can't even give you one meat as jara. They can't even put jara rice. Jara eba. But meat, they've given jara meat before. Ah. I, I, want, I wanted to say you jazz then. <laughs> I, I, I just said to give me that jazz. So is it that jara even has limitation? If that's what jara to one they can send you away. Takilo de. Open room mini bani. You know, so you can ask for Jara so they can tell you that I'm not selling again. <laughs> Jara even has what? Limitation when you buy something in this life. Oh, when you, when you have Jesus, the Jara of God has no limit. Hey, hey, the Jara of God has what? Has no limit. What is the Jara of God? All things, all things, all things. Hey! May you receive Jara from God. Hey, God can give you Jara of one billion dollars and it's just Jara. Oh, God, when Jara? Jara. The Jara of God has no limitation, no. Are you following me? Human beings, when you are buying things from them, they can complain after giving Jara to some level. That is okay, is okay, me only. When Jara, let him move, when not it Are you following me? But God's Jara is, is, is beyond limits. It's limitless. It's all things. Can you say all things, my friends? There is nothing God cannot give you as Jara because you have Jesus. He has given you Jesus. Are you following me? You will, if you like, come and buy 10 bags of rice from me, you will be an abnormal person, a wicked person, a wicked person to them to give you one bag as Jara. I can't, you say you cannot ask. Because you know, you know that's no longer Jara. Hey! But for God, anything is Jara. For God, anything is what? Anything is Jara. A good wife is Jara. A good husband is Jara. A good baby is Jara. <laughs> it's Jara. Good cars are Jara. Are you following me? Mansions are Jara. Billions of dollars are Jara. Hey! Can you see all the Jaras we have in God? Health is Jara. Long life is Jara. Are you following me? Oh, all things. Can you say all things? What if I say spirituality itself is Jara? Everything comes with Jesus. It's Jara. Guys, you know what I'm telling you this morning? You can have anything. You can do what? You can what? You can have anything. Nothing is too much for you to have. Why? Tell me why. Because you already have Jesus. If I have Jesus, then don't tell me that there's something that is too much for me. Why, why is it too much for me? Why is Jesus too much for me? I already have this Jesus. Why is a man, why, why is a mansion too much for me to stay in? Why, 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 why is a shoe of one name too much for me to wear? Why can't I enter an hotel and eat food of 200k? And, and it's not like my stomach becomes hard. I just enjoy the pleasure. Why is it too much? Why is the rich watch of, of 500,000 naira too much for me to wear? Why can't I wear a polo of, polo of 1.5m? Why is it too much? I'm wearing Jesus already. Are you following me? I'm wearing Jesus already. You say Gucci. You say Gucci. You say it's too expensive. You say the those designs, those, those designers that are expensive. At the expense of as my Jesus. Don't you know that you have put on Christ? So which clothes is too much for you to put on? Which designer is too much for you, Mubarak? You know they wear Jesus already. If I can wear Jesus, I can wear anything. Nothing is too much for me to wear. I don't chop Jesus. Nothing is too much for, nothing is too much for him to chop. I'm riding on Jesus' wing. Nothing is too much for him to ride on. Private jet is not too much. I, I'm riding Jesus already. Are they right, Jesus? Are you following me? Is this mindset being installed in you? I hope poverty is falling off your heart. 
Guys, Jesus is a big deal. That you have Jesus is a big deal. It's a big deal. Do you know what Jesus is? Do you know what it caused God to give you Jesus? It caused God his own life. Because Jesus is the life of God. It caused God his life. God gave his life when he gave you Jesus. So I give, so now I give you my life. I, I cannot give you shit. Guys, you can have anything. And thank God, God says his own genre is anything, all things, anything you want. Guys, anything you want to. Guys, do you understand me? Your prophecy is what? It's Jara. Can I say Jara? You know why I'm using the word Jara? Because we all, we all know what Jara is. We know Jara is very... Jara Kerego. Niko Tan, sorry, you're Kerego, right? Prophecy, Kerego. That's the meaning. Guys, okay, Kerego. It's too small. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Jesus is the big deal. Jesus is the one who is a big deal. Are you blessed, my friends? Please, nothing, nothing should stop. Stop thinking small of your life, of yourself. Stop thinking you are you are not deserving. Stop thinking anything is too big for you. Stop thinking God. See, how shall it not with him? Stop, stop thinking God cannot will not give you something. Stop thinking there's something too much for God to give you. Stop thinking there's something too big for God to give you. Stop thinking like that. Why? Because He has given you the biggest thing already. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Now let me show you what I mean by financial prosperity. I've been, I've been explaining to you, but let me show you in the scripture. So you understand that. So you, so you won't think that it's possible that it's just exorbitant. But exorbitant is actually what we should be. Are you following me? Lavish is what we should be. It's a bed of roses. Because I've been telling you, if you want to change your phone three times in a year, you buy an iPhone 14 Pro, that's not too much. For you to wear a shoe of 1.5, that's not. You think that pastor is just talking his own. Let me show you the Bible. Are you ready to see Bible now? Because all of you love Bible. And I've been showing Bible since all these days. <laughs> he has given us all things richly to enjoy. If that one is not enough for you. I shall not feel freely, freely give us all things. That one said, no, be. You know, he never do you. Let me now show you again from another place what I mean by financial freedom. Can I say financial freedom? I mean financial freedom. I mean when you have the resources to abundantly carry out the desires of your heart. I didn't say carry out to, to what? Abundantly carry out the desires of your heart. You know you can desire to put to put cotton in this in this in this in this room, for example. That's the desire of your heart. Huh? You know you can what you can afford is a cotton of 5k. You know, you, you carry a design of your heart, but you didn't carry it out abundantly. What about you get, get a cutting of 1.5 M? You know they are cutting and they are cutting. <laughs> are you following? I'm talking of <laughs> when you have the resources to abundantly carry out what? The desires of your heart. Some of you, many of us, maybe all of us, cannot even carry out the desires of our heart yet. Not to talk about abundantly carrying it out. Are you following? Ezekiel wanted to buy a pot. I mean, yeah, pot. I got the yeah, pot. What do you call it? Oraimo. You can't just shout me Oraimo in my ear. Oraimo, Oraimo. And Oraimo get price. <laughs> they get quality. Are you following? The guy was shouting Oraimo. Yeah, let's go Oraimo. Somehow, somehow, we shall went to like three places. We shall. We now went on that third place. Luckily, we shall have someone cheap Oraimo. <laughs> And we price, 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 price. We shall price it to 5,500. Upon us, they will price. I still got transferred the remaining 1,000. We did my account to this guy's account. <laughs> the guy really desired that or I'm more here for. He wanted to buy it. It was desire of his heart. Are you following me? Are you with me? But in kind of that desire, he already said, ah, this one salary goes so far now. <laughs> Are you following me? In kind of desire, something already has to suffer it. And he's not even buying the best of that product. If he had money, that's not the one he would buy. You buy the, you buy the best of the brand of Oraimo, of Oraimo He bought the list. Even that list he bought is out of struggle. So, he kind of has a desire to get a airport, Oraimo product, but not abundantly. Are you following me? He didn't, he didn't carry it out abundantly. If you carry it out abundantly, you buy the best of that Raimo product. And he will do it without feeling it. 
Guys, can you say financial freedom? So, I'm not saying that you are just able to do one or two things that you, you feel like doing. But when you were, how did you do it? Did you do it with confidence? Did you, did you do it where? So, 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 is there glory in it? Ah, I, I don't know how to put it to you. Did you do it with ease? And not just with ease. Because he could have even bust down with ease if he had the money to buy with ease. But he didn't do it abundantly. <laughs> if he had like, let's say he had 7k that day. He would have bought that 501 with ease. But he didn't buy it abundantly. That was not still financial failure. Because there's one better, there are other ones better than that one. And that's the one he would have really wanted. Can you say financial freedom? Guys, you must understand financial freedom as a life of lavish, of luxury, as I've been teaching you. And I'll show you in the Bible. Where you have the resources, are you, are you with me? Financial freedom is when you have the resources to abundantly carry out the designs of your heart. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Just one, one scripture and, and I'll have explained to you what financial freedom is. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 11. Second Chronicles chapter 7. So you know the pastor is just making up words, even though I've shown you many scriptures already. But let me show you one scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 11. Now this is about King Solomon. When he has built a temple and offering sacrifices to the Lord. Look at verse 11, so powerful. Please, if you have not been marking any scripture before in your life, that since I've been teaching you, mark this scripture so you can be looking at it and understand no financial freedom. Thus, Solomon finished the house of the Lord. Are you with me? And the king's house. Friends, are you with me? Lord Solomon did what? Solomon finished. Please write down these scriptures or mark it on your phone. Or mark it in your Bible. Be looking at it every day. Keep building so that you can come into what I'm talking about financial freedom. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Don't Solomon finished the house of the Lord and what? And the king's house, his own house. The house of the Lord and what? And what? And the king's house. He finished both of them. But look at something very powerful. What I mean by financial freedom. There are dozen of the house of the Lord and the king's house. Uh-huh. Look at it. And all that came into Solomon's heart. Can you say all that came into his heart? And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and where and in his own house, he did what? He prosperously what? Effected. Can you remove prosperously? <laughs> And the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's house to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, he effected. Can you say he effected? Do you know that if progress is not there, that you can even effect all the things that come to your heart? Do you know it's already, <laughs> it's massive already. That all this, everything that comes to your heart, you can effect it. Do you know if, if you can do everything that comes to your heart, do you know you are blessed, do you know you are prosperous? Guys, do you know you are prosperous? That you can do everything that comes to your heart. Everything that comes to you. He says, everything that came to his heart. Everything that came to his heart. That you can do it. You are a prosperous person. But to show how prosperous this man was, and what I mean by financial freedom, he says, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, how did he affect it? He prosperously affected. He abundantly, he lavishly. I feel like buying a curtain in my house. I'm not just buying any out curtain. I'm buying the best of curtains. I'm buying diamond curtains with blue lapis lazuli. I'm buying the best of rugs. Are you following me? It prosperously affected. This is financial freedom, my friends. Are you following me? Where you have the resources. To abundantly carry out the desires of your heart. Are you following? It says all. Oh, all. Oh, can you say all? Not some. For your Kung Fu Do you know sometimes you give up one thing for another thing? This one not giving up. And even when you give up one thing for the other, the one you still want to, you still try to do, you still don't do it well. Guys, show you. Can you say financial freedom? Can you see what the Bible is talking about now? He seems to be talking about inefficiency. Don't go there. That God is able to what? To do a thing abundantly above what I can have to think. This is another, this is the Old Testament version of that scripture. 
Are you following me? That Solomon was able to what? That all the things that came into his heart, everything. Can you say everything? Every, everything. 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 Some of you have never successfully carried out one thing out of the hundred things in your heart. One you've not carried it out. Not even carried it out abundantly. Prosperous. This one says everything. Oh, may God bring you to this level of financial freedom. May God give you financial freedom, my friends. This is what I mean by financial freedom. Where all the things that come that my heart desires, I can carry them out abundantly. Are you following me? And that's how God wants you to live. You understand? I, I brought you here to see the definition of financial freedom. What I mean by financial freedom. But this kind of life is not, restri- is not restricted to Solomon. If for the child of God, I've been showing you, we just saw it in Romans 8. We've seen it in 1 Timothy. He gave us all things richly to enjoy. We've seen it in Ephesians. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. So friends, this is the life of a child of God actually. Hmm? This is not a life of wastefulness. See, when we are talking prophecy, please stop, stop thinking waste. Stop thinking of wastefulness. Stop it. Stop it. Are you following me? This is financial freedom. Can you say financial freedom? This is financial freedom. Where I have the resources to prosperously, lavishly, luxuriously, abundantly affect all the things that come to my heart. How many of you, how many of you are in this level already? <laughs> Is that you need this teaching. And I told you this teaching is not to make you excited, it's to bring you to these things that God is saying. So I'm showing you these things. And I told people that will come into what I'm saying and people that practice what I'm saying. Some people that are excited at the teaching must practice it. Glory to God forevermore. So do you, know, do you get what I've been explaining to you from the beginning of this teaching? It's not like, it's not, it's not wastefulness. It's not wastefulness. The thing that came, is there anything that came into his heart? Can you say his heart? That's, been, that's his heart desire. His heart desire. Some of you are living far from your heart desire. Me, I'm still living very far from my heart desire. <laughs> my heart desire is still, I'm not living by faith. I'm, even though in my present situation, I'm very strong, I'm bold, I'm loving God. It doesn't stop me. But my desire is still far from my present <laughs> Are you following financial freedom? Guys, are you ready for this kind of wealth? Are you ready for this kind of wealth? Are you ready for this kind of prosperity? That's what God wants to give you. An end must come to a life of management, a life of struggling. Your son, your, your, your children need both, they need clothes and shoes. I said they have to choose one. <laughs> is that how you choose clothes or you choose shoe? Choose one, no. I can only afford one. No, you must, you can afford everything. You should afford everything. That's God's plan for you. Are you following? When I say you should, I'm not saying that you're in your present situation that you have to force yourself. I'm saying God's plan is that you should be able to afford everything. And not just anyhow. Abundantly. Some of you think you don't like good things. Because of your present situation. You know, you know some, some of you abuse people that wear shoes of one million now. So how can you wear shoes of one million that you are a wasteful person? It's because of your situation. When money enters your hand, you know you can wear a ring of two million. <laughs> you know you can wear a ring of two million. See, my brother that's looking very humble. Uh, can say, ah, ah, this guy is not even spiritual. See, his shirt. How can you wear shirt of 1.5? He wants guy doesn't have money yet. <laughs> when money enters the guy's hand, he can wear slippers, slippers of 3M. This one. This guy, he likes good things, don't mind him. It's obvious, right? Even though he does not have, he's still struggling to, to be there. 
He still spoke me. See, yeah, that time I, I was, I was, I was praising him and he stood up and she looked at him. He said, guy is very proud. <laughs> a very proud person. Praise <laughs> Jesus. I don't have to be, if you want to happen, you must be confident of your present situation. And that God can bless you. Now, some, some of us are, we are shy of our present position. I'm not sure of my present position. I'm not sure of my present situation. Some of you are, you are shy. Get to the boat. You don't have a car yet. Walk with your leg. Walk, walk like a king. Let the person that is driving a car say, feel ashamed. <laughs> uh, that person may not get car say, see, enjoy. See how he has See, see, see how he carries his son on his neck. And you inside car, you are still, you are still angry with your son. You are inside car, you are still shouting at your son. You are still spanking the boy. Person may they take leg, walk, carry carrying chance, buy ice cream. Guys, don't be ashamed of your present situation. Don't be ashamed of your present place, of your present state. Let people who be in mansion be ashamed. Are you following me? I, let them see you living in one room and they are ashamed of their life. Because of the joy that you exude. Because of the peace around you. Because of the contentment in your heart. Because of your love for Jesus. Because of your passion for Jesus. Are you following me? See, nothing must take your joy from you. Nothing must take this life, this, this life of God from you. Either poverty or abundance. And you are coming out of your poverty. You are coming out of your lack. You are coming out of penury. You are coming out of smallness. You are coming into financial freedom. You are coming into prosperity. That's what God says I should teach you in this season. And I pray and I hope you are receiving these things. Hope your heart is embracing them. That's why I keep talking about coming early to church because it's part of all being financial prosperity. I'm not lying to you. I keep shouting at it, keep talking about it. I will abuse it sometimes. I'll say it jokingly, but I'm serious. Because only those who practice these things will actually be blessed. I'm not lying. It's in the Bible. It says the doer of the word that is blessed. I don't want to have a church where only few people are blessed. I want everybody to be blessed. We can only be blessed when you practice the word of God, the word I'm teaching you. Glory to Jesus, forevermore. I want us to close our continue next week, Sunday by God's grace. Friends, God's plan is for you to prosper. His plan for you is to have abundance. His plan is not for you to manage. Are you following? His plan is not for you to what? It's not for you to manage life. And Solomon, all the things that came into his heart, he was able to prosperously effect it. And you see that the Bible was Bible talking about that he effected was not even spiritual things as it were. In case you are thinking that uh, it's because it's God's house, because it's, it's the temple, it's the temple, he said, and his own house. Are you telling me? So you want, to, you, want, you want a house and you're able to do it abundantly. You want a car, you're able to go for the best. So let your mind start going for the best, even at the level you are. What your money can buy, that's more thing that your, that your money can buy. Go for the best of it. Are you following? Start training your mind to go for the best things. Are you following me? You are not, you are not, you are not wretched. How, how can you want to buy paper and you say, a shy, a shy, a shy, a shy, a shy, a You say, a shy, you say, that's where the vitamins are. No vitamins there. No vitamins in a shy. Please, stop it. Stop doing, stop it. You say, oh man, poor, oh man, poor, kill off poor. Something that my God is already coming out. Oh, thing you're in kung fu, 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 fu. You say, no, oh, funny, oh, funny, God, go show. Oh, God, oh, man, do you. Go, king, oh, man, come. It's not a good life. If it's three pieces of the best tomatoes you're wondering, I can buy, buy it. Don't buy a shower of 20 pieces that has broken and is smelly already. Please, if I catch you in this church by nature, I'm sending you away. <laughs> Don't come and embarrass my church. If I, can, if I see where they're selling baby and you're buying nature, ah, I will embarrass you. You will return that nature. You will buy the one your money can buy. Stop it. Stop it. Some of you say, Momo, I'm going to do the jaya. I'm going to do the jaya. I'm going to do the jaya. You say, let me pack it. I want to put it Please.
start training your mind to get the best. If it's too poor, your money can buy. Too best, too good for more. Go for it. You know this thing, you have to train your mind. I train my mind for the best. Train your mind for the best things. Are you following me? If it's one shirt or two good shirts your money can buy, buy it. Man, don't, don't gather 20 nonsense, 20 rags. I say you've, you've bought clothes. I say, Jem, 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 you go pack and you go play. Ah, uh, go. Even uh, even those last students go eat eat not one rat. All of you are in the same league. Yo, you're all poor. See those get on, those get on man she beats girls. Eh, but not man sha. Kill no sha. Oh, see I go with some sha. Correct clothes. Some, some do you sha? Do you sha correct clothes? You pick it from the from the hunger. You pick it. You pick it from where they kept it. It's, it's smelling well. You back on what they would have poured that nonsense perfume. Even not marry perfume, you know. It, all of them smell the same way. But if, 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 if that's all you can afford. But I'm telling you, whatever you can afford, get the best. Are you following me? Even if it's great, okay, what, what do you call all those great? Get the best of those great. Are you with me? What do you call the talk bear? Eh? Tell, tell us, you know it. Don't, don't pretend. Tell us, tell us. Grade A. <laughs> if the clothes you can still buy is all those big. Wait, ah. Once you're jambe, you need la la ba, you need. All of you, some of you, you know the day they to jar the bill. <laughs> Every Monday, five o'clock. Why did they then, yo? So, my friend, big, giddy, big, giddy, don't share jar, baby. Why she rush or giddy, baby? Akube, yeah, washiri, washiri. Akube. Oh, every morning, no man jambe. Alaba to buy the day be junction bank here. Charu address me, oh my jambe. Guys, stop buying jam. Get the best, please. Are you with me? If that's what you can get for now, do you know what I'm telling you? I want your mind to be used to getting the best things in life. So I'm not saying you can't afford a shirt of 10k and that you have to kill yourself. No, 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 no. If you can, if, if what you can afford is a shirt of 1k, get the best of that shirt. Ah, but God forbid, what you can, what you can afford is not, is not a shower. That one is out of your life. A shower is out of your life in Jesus' name. A shower pepper. That one I cannot allow you to, that one is out. Please. Manage the pepper you can buy. That is, ah, ah. That is your, that is your bomb line you are in. <laughs> At least you have father, I'm still your father. I'm still my life. Please, get the best. Use the best things in life. If it's a show of one five, get the best of it. You understand? Don't be used to, 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 to low grade. Don't, how do I put it? Don't be used to, don't be a second class citizen. Don't be used to a low life. Do you understand? Because you are a child of God. And he can give you, he wants to give you all things freely. He wants you to have all things in abundance. The things that come to your heart. Guys, and I see you coming into this level of freedom, of financial freedom. I see you coming to this level of abundance. I see you coming to that place where you are able to abundantly have followed your heart desires. May Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'll continue this teaching next week, Sunday morning. And I'll, then I'll continue local assembly this evening. God bless you. See you in the evening. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Um, thank you so much, Pastor, for that word. I want us to um, appreciate the name of God. I want us to thank God. That I want us to pray that God will help us to be the doer of the word, not just the hearer of the word alone. Let's pray that God will help us, you know, to put all this into practice, you know, to train our mind. Let's pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. That these words that we have had will manifest in our lives. It will manifest in our daily walk with God in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. He will help us to daily manifest these words in the name of Jesus. In the name of, we will not just be here alone. We will not just be here alone, but we will be doer of the word. We will be doer of the word. Our minds will be renewed with the word in the name of Jesus. These seeds 
You know, the words have been planted. Pastor has planted the word in our hearts. Let's pray that Lord we help these words to germinate in our hearts in the name of Jesus. That we have roots in the name of Jesus. That we have roots in the name of Jesus. Our hearts will be fertile enough in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we've prayed.